hey it's me and we're here with another tutorial and as you can see it's already started so let me start by explaining what we do and it's the same for every other step it's very simple you just go to file new and then make a new uh, new file by 1500 wide by 500 high and then you go to file place embedded and then place your render and as you can see I'm just showing you how big the file is right there and then we'll go on to the next step Alright, so pretty much I just put my color correction in, very normal for every other step. You just find a color correction pack, put it in, choose what you want. Uh, but you can tweak it in the end of course, it's not set in stone. But I just, uh, I googled Fortnite Chapter 2 wallpapers, I found this, and then I'm just gonna go to File, Place Embedded, and put it right in there and make sure that it covers the entire thing. So I'm gonna do Control or Command T, depending on if you're <laughs> Windows or Mac. Control T, and then I'm gonna stretch for the whole thing. But in the end, this isn't going to show much at all. It's just kind of a nice base for you to layer down all of your blending and lighting and all that. Because, uh, you know, it's very normal for people to do stuff like that just to put down a base. Like, um, I know people who work at, they do drawing at Disney and stuff like that. And when they go on their lunch breaks, they like to just paint. And they do quick paintings, and they start it always by just blocking in random colors. So they're forced to put stuff over it. So no space is really, you know, no space is really unattended to, if that makes any sense. I also feel that this kind of relates to what we're doing right here. You can see I set the background to luminosity, and I'm just kind of messing with it. And while you're making these, these uh, headers, just always keep in mind negative space aka what you don't see is as impactful as uh, positive space so make sure you're always thinking about where the eyes will go when you're looking at this and where things are leading you you can see the character's gun will probably point towards the text which will be really fun so anyway i did Control t i messed with the background i made it the size and i'm just getting a big black brush and i'm just kind of painting in right there i'm gonna mess with the opacity after but this is just, you know, to make sure the background isn't as intrusive, if that makes any sense at all. And as you can see, once I did that black background, I changed the opacity of the kind of wallpaper in the back very low, so it just kind of blends nice with each other. Then I'm taking a big brush and it's very very small but I am um, I put the opacity pretty low and I'm just gonna mess with the blending mode you're gonna see what I choose right here it's actually let's see what I choose screen yeah so screen is always a really good one if you're gonna start with the uh, blending like that and I made the opacity pretty low you don't want it to stick out too much I always see people overdoing this or underdoing it or doing one color but anyway you make a new layer above that and then you just kind of get uh, like a lighter color you know because you want it kind of to be lighter when it's more when the light is closer to the character and then it to kind of get more colorful slash dark as it goes away which you know that should make perfect sense And there you go, I kind of painted some white spots behind the character. And then I made a new layer, right clicked, and then clicked create clipping mask. But when I made the new layer, it was above the character. So as you can see, it's a clipping mask right now, and I'm just using white to paint the edges of kind of where the white in the background meets with the character. If that makes any sense. And I'm switching the blending mode to soft light, of course. And again, this is a clipping mask above the, um, the render, which is our character.
what you saw me just do real quick there. This is absolutely optional. You won't really notice it in the end. That's just something a little extra I like to do. Is I just kind of place behind the character and before the light, I kind of place just a big texture. Any texture you want. I chose an oil spill. I set it to soft light. I turn the opacity down a lot. And then I just erase the edges so they weren't as harsh. So then you can just see I get a little bit more texture there. Um, a lot of people have a different way of doing putting texture for the globe, but this is just something really nice and fun. I thought it'd be for the glitch, the colors kind of stand out, and I just thought it'd be kind of fun and like hazy, and uh, I thought it turned out pretty well. And then this is probably my favorite part. I get a big blue brush, well actually a small blue brush, and I just see where all the blue spots or the highlights or whatever is glowing, and I just want to amplify that. So I make a new layer over everything, I paint right over it, and then I set it to vivid light, and then I turn down uh, the opacity to whatever looks good. And as you can see for me, it's about like 70%, is I think what I went with, 50%, something like that. But it really just adds just a really nice glow, and it's my favorite part. It looks so much nicer after you do it. And then this next part is optional, but if you really want to make the extra extra step and make it look really nice, this is what I do. Over the character, like we did before, we made a new layer and then created another clipping mask by right clicking and creating clipping mask. And then we painted more big white spots so it's blended even more, set it to soft light, lowered the opacity. Uh, if you could see before and after, you just go back in the video. I'll turn the layers on and off a few times if you see. but. You could just see how much better it looks. And then also, after that, I made another layer above that. Right click, create clipping mask, and now I'm taking a black brush. And I'm just going to paint some black spots, and then I'm going to set it also to soft light. Uh, or overlay, whichever looks best. I went with soft light. But then you turn the opacity down for that, because you don't want it to look too dark. It'll look out of place. But just kind of make it, you know just more amplified. I think it looks really nice and then you turn the opacity down so it doesn't show up too much. You don't want to be overdoing a lot of this stuff or else it'll look really weird but make sure you're doing this if you really want to go the extra mile. I think you should but uh, check it out. A little skip in the video. I'm so sorry. I wasn't recording that part But what I did was actually very simple. I'm gonna explain it to you right now I just found an image of a glitch. I placed it over everything Set the blending mode to soft light as we've been doing for other stuff Make sure that it looks fine and then just erased it around where the character is So it would kind of blend in with the background as you can see the glitch next to the character is kind of coming off the character I also found another glitch, I just put in the background, lowered the opacity a lot, set the blending mode to overlay or soft light, whatever looks best for you. It's really, really simple. And then, uh, you know, just make sure the opacity is really low, because there's going to be text and stuff over it in the end, and then we'll move on to text after that. Here's a disclaimer about this text. I am using a Lightroom, and this text was very, very, very complex. Um, probably because I spent too much time on it, and I should have just stopped overthinking it, but I did spend a lot of time on it. So I am gonna make a separate video on how to do this text, because this video would just be so long. And there are other videos, I can put a link in the description to a guy who has a similar nice Chrome text. But I am using uh, Max, the Max DG Lightroom. You've probably heard about it if you've had experience with stuff like this. If not, it's something you do have to purchase. I would recommend picking it up. You cannot get it for free. If you are going to get a Lightroom for free, it's probably going to be really bad. But this will save you so much time. As you can see, I just kind of plug in whatever name I want. And then I just kind of render it, make sure I select the output path. But all of this information is going to be in a separate video coming soon, hopefully. If not, I'll put a link in the description to someone who does similar text because, um, you know, why not? Save me time, save you time, and I don't want this video to be 10 hours long. And 
there's text. You can see if you get some good looking text, I think that it really brings everything together. And I kind of went with a chrome type text with kind of a, str a, start a sharp stroke. And then outside I did like a, a stroke around the letters, not touching the letters, which is also something that people have been doing a lot and I think it looks pretty nice. So then after that, I'm just going to actually put another oil spill and I'm going to mess with the um, blending mode to what looks good. And then I'm going to actually erase parts of it just to give it some more texture in the background as you can see right there. As you can see I did use a picture of the oil spill and I will turn down the opacity a bit more later but I just set it to luminosity or erase some parts and then we're actually gonna add it some of our foreground characters and pretty much this is really simple you just search up you know like Fortnite items PNG and then make sure that they're PNGs or else you're gonna have to crop out the background yourself it saves you a lot of time make sure they are royalty free while you're doing it though or free to use but then once you do that you're actually going to go to file, place embedded, and then place it in. And with this, I just made a new layer. I went to um, the little circle in the bottom right. It's like a half circle, half dark, half light. And then I went to hue saturation and I made it a clipping mask over the fish by clicking right click, great clipping mask. It's really simple. And then um, I actually just messed with one of the, what's it called? The rocker, I don't know if they're called rockers. But I, um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know exactly what to do. Um, you just kind of mess with the, oh, the hue is what you do. And then you just switch it around until I made the fish like really purple so that it blends with the background itself. Then I went, then I selected the layer with the fish. I went to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then I'm gonna blur the fish. This is actually a trick that I used in the last tutorial. Um, and the tutorial, the tutorial before, it's really simple and, um, Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur, and this is what you do for items that are in the foreground. It's really simple. And then I made a new layer by clicking that little page in the bottom right, and then I right clicked, or you can just do all, it's kind of hard to explain, I just go right click and then click Create Clipping Mask. But I did this above the fish, and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to blend it, I'm going to add I'm going to make it lighter up top and darker on the bottom. As you can see, I ju I'm just taking a big black brush and I'm going on that layer that we just added, the clipping mask above. And I'm just going to paint in a little bit, lower the opacity a little bit, then I'm going to do the same to the top. I'm going to create another layer above that by clicking the page again. Then I'm going to create a clipping mask by um, right clicking, create clipping mask like we've done with all the other clipping masks right above the fish. And then we're gonna add a white spot above it as you're gonna see me do. And then I'm gonna change the uh, blending mode to soft light and then just kinda uh, mess with the opacity to just see whatever looks best. It's gonna be different for every single item. There is no set opacity or there is no set blending mode. It's all just relative to what you're doing. Use your best judgment. And I know you're looking for immediate answers. If you, if you wanna use something that I'm recommending, I would just say soft light 70 to 90 percent works a lot of the time when you're doing stuff like this but it's really relative and the more you do this the more you just practice yourself the better you'll figure out of what looks best and what works best
you go. It's pretty simple. What I did was just added more different foreground things by just going file, place embedded, and then I just kept adding more things in the front ground. And I also added a plane in the background using the same technique that we did with that fish, only without using the blur. It's all the same. It's all very easy. If you get the fish right, you'll absolutely be able to get all the other items right. You just have to not blur it. I did blur the uh, bandages on the right side though, but just use that technique for everything in the foreground that I did right there. And as you can see, it's uh, that's our finished product. I messed with the color correction a bit at the end, and um, it's looking pretty good. So let me know what you thought about this one. Um, I will be practicing a lot. Hopefully I'll try and get as many speed art type vids if I can out. Hopefully tutorials. Tutorials are a lot harder to make. But I do love making tutorials, but we'll see how fast I can get those out. But thank you so much for the support. It is definitely not unnoticed. And I wasn't expecting a lot of the things to do this well. But I'm having so much fun making these, actually. And um, it's really keeping me busy during uh, all of this spacious time with the coronavirus. So if you enjoyed, make sure you comment down below. If you have any questions or just if you like the video or anything like that. And I'll try my best to respond to every single comment. That's what I've been doing for the past few vids. But uh, again, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys later. This has been JM. Bye-bye.